All right, this is posted reality, y'all. I got KD with me. Look, this is somebody who I rock with. This is one of my brothers right here, man. Um, let me start off with you. You got your daughter with you, bro. You good? What's up? Man, daddy duty full time, bro. It's 25-8, bro. Well, I don't understand it, but I do <laughs> sympathize with you, you know? I see she on the game. It don't get no realer than this. But I appreciate you coming, though, bro. I know your schedule is busy. I know you had to make some things happen, you know, but still glad you came through. Still means a lot. And today we just going to talk about life, you know, what you got going on and a little bit about yourself. You're a Christian rapper. You used to be a party promoter. You come from humble beginnings. You come from a family of, of uniqueness. You know what I'm saying? Just give me a little bit about, like, really where it all got started. Man, bro, honestly, it got started with sports. Everybody in my family plays sports. Uh, the weird thing about that, uh, 10th grade, sports got ripped away from me. You know, I was cool, dude, flashy guy, but I rode the bench in high school. You know, so right there, you know, that's everybody golden token. If you playing sports in high school, that's like driving a Corvette down the street, you know, mm -hmm. getting all the attention. So it's like... You had to differentiate, you know, what you going to have now. You know, in Houston, we developed a lingo. You know, we developed style, swag. So it was a whole lot of things to throw into the pool just to keep me, you know, on the surface. But, you know, it, I cool. guess growing up, you know, in the city, you, you develop a whole lot of knowledge. You're moving quick. So mm -hmm. I had a whole up. lot to offer with that. So from Houston, from then you go to Beaumont. But you recently, but you recently. For sure, for sure. You recently moved to Houston. I mean, my bad. You recently moved to Beaumont. So what was that? What was that transition like? Why did Why did you end up doing that? You also say you, you know, you rode the bench in, in high school, bro. That's okay. I was, it was a time when I rode the bench too. <laughs> Oh, no, nah, bro, a lot, a lot come with that. Uh, even with the, you know, because it's like I ran away from the nest. Bro, being in Beaumont for seven years, it's, it's a lot down I-10, you know, a lot of right and wrong. But, you know, not coming back home, they feel like you traded for the team. So it's like, man, uh, just networking, I think that's what, what I took from college and just I took from sports because even though – you know what I'm saying? I might not be on the field running plays with the top five star players after they leave practice. You know what I'm saying? KD, what you doing? So it's just like the networking aspect. You learn how to just still find your way in there because they might need not need you to catch a pass, but they might need you down the line to network for a podcast. They might need you down there to, to make a business move, you know, just the inner the inner social media world. We in that world right now, you know, it's just we didn't think it was gonna be as big, but I could stop talking to you five years ago, and I might need you five years down the line just because you're doing the same thing I'm doing. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so it's just like it's crazy how everything lined up like yeah, that. It's different it's stages, different stages of life, different phases. So you, but you started out as a party promoter, and now I don't know when, when, but but now you're a Christian rapper, <laughs> but also you know what I'm saying like you really heavy on the Bible. Like, am I right or am I wrong? So. When how did that phase kick in? When did that phase kick in, bro? You go from party promoter to, you know what I'm saying, like something deeper, something greater, but something <laughs> just mean, a whole other different uh, way. Like that part, that that part wasn't me, bro. Cause it's still a fight right now. You know, uh, being in the front, but also trying to lead from the back. You know what I'm saying, like. Taking that route, it's it's like, yo, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You might have a conversation about, oh, everybody trying to get the fanciest car, but over here, living a Christian lifestyle, humbling yourself, like, I got to put everybody in the room before me. You know what I'm saying? And I might only have, like, a, a, a box of noodles and some milk, but <laughs> you probably got steak and shrimp, but still, just because you got steak and shrimp, I got to put you before me and still lead the way because ultimately, bro, 
the just like what you what you going with the mental health aspect. It's the mental health health aspect on everything because you could take a hundred thousand from me. I'm gonna grind it out and go get it back. You know what I'm saying? But you could take a hundred thousand like from a rich man. He might not know what to do just because it's, it was his business that made him not his business moves. So you know what I'm saying? It's just it's just different. It sound like. It sounds like I can learn from it. It's just with me, like, it's hard to turn the other cheek sometimes. Like, I struggle with that. Sometimes, like, if you if you hurt me, if you if you stab me in the back, I take it so I take it there. I take it there. You know, not to the, not in the sense like we just gonna go up, but just in the sense like I'm gonna look at you different, you know, because when when it's like you really walk that walk. See, I'm trying to walk that walk and talk that talk. But I know where I struggle at. Like, there's certain things, you know, like, I got to have patience for. Her. And loyalty is one of them. You know what I'm saying? But I consider you a brother. You know, I consider you, like, somebody who I could look up to even though I'm older than you. You know, you got that you got that vibe about you that's, like, it's deeper than most people. You know, what you bring to the table, bro, you come from humble beginnings. You know, f right off the bat, I can relate to that. But also, you got this thing about you where you you empathize with being this leader, but at the same time, you don't really call yourself that. You call yourself what a disciple of Christ, right? Yeah, because we all learning, bro. Uh, it's, that's the part about it, man. With with Loki, okay, that's just saying like, okay, we're networking. I meet somebody that's sixty. He might look at me and tell me, "Ah, oh, easy money. I see you, easy money." Well, like, I'm only 26. So what I done did in these 26 years that he ain't did in his 60 years? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, so how much time did you waste and how much time did I, I gather and collect on it and double my time? Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times it's, yeah, it, we not the, I'm not the only one that's doing it at a young age that's, that's progressing, that's being humble, that's, you know what I'm saying, know how to leave from the sole of my shoe into the sticky gum that's on the concrete. You know, so it's just like you look at it as far as um, it's a lot of negative energy in this world, bro. And I see a whole lot of negative energy. Yeah, it, it feel positive. I used to party promote. Mm -hmm. It feel good having the the crowd knowing I packed out this party. You know what I'm saying? It feel good knowing that uh, <laughs> you know, you could set the mood. But also, I wasn't giving them nothing good. You came, to, you came to my parties. You came to the kickbacks that me and my brothers was doing, and you left hot, sweaty, with nothing good. Probably dehydrated. I ain't giving you no food. But now I'm giving you spiritual food. So okay. it's like mm, okay. now you can sit back and be like, bro, what is he doing? Like, okay, I have my daughter up here. I'm about to have another daughter. So it's just like. Um, sometimes you got to be the example. And I ain't going to lie, being the example is hard. It ain't easy. Because I was easy. just going to say, we both know, like, positivity is not the number one seller mm -hmm. in America. You know, let's be honest. Nah, it's for some reason, the more organized you get, the more of a, the more, like, you sympathize with people and you try to get people on a plan, on an even playing field to where everybody has equal opportunity at life. You know, sustainable life. It seems like there's always something that just kind of chip that that seems to chip away at that. Whether it's negative energy, whether it's the the world, the society you live in. You know, people telling you different, trying to take you off that mm. that journey. And you gotta think about it like this. You know, what I'm you hosting your podcast in one of the busiest cities in the United States, Houston. You know what I'm saying? Like you on you in Houston on business. <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> I grew up Five minutes from here So it's like You know what I'm saying Went to Lamar High School On West Thomas So That's What Five minutes from the Galleria right You know there. So I see But I'm also Ten minutes from Third Ward You feel me So it's like I can get a whole lot At one good time a lot going on I But agree. When everybody We was all soaking up Each other lane You know We all soaking up Each other vibes so shoot, nowadays in cities like this, uh, your color don't mean nothing because we all acting the same, we all thinking the same, we all moving the same. Yeah. Now, 
going an hour up the road to the country, it was a little different. You know what I'm saying? I started seeing more interracial relationships. So I'm like, okay, like we can't really we can't really love each other. You know what I'm saying? We can't really adapt and grow from one each other because out here. I mean, but it's diverse in Houston, ain't it? Like, yeah, it's, you see diversity. But look, though, but, uh-huh. out here, uh, a Benz is cool. You go out up the road, a eighty thousand dollar cow is cool. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's it's different level. Like that man in Houston, that same man in Houston is is riding that Benz. That same man in Beaumont, out up the road in the country. Look, that Benz is my eighty thousand dollar cow out there with the horns on it and spots. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's money, money different now. You know, everything is different. For sure, money is different. Times are different. We living in sensitive times. There's certain things you cannot say. You get your platform snatched. Oh yeah, like you. But, okay, mm-hmm. what made what made you want to do mental health? What made me want to do? That's a good. That's a great question, bro. What made me want to do mental health is just the the willingness to try to work on me in front of other people, but also behind closed doors, but also in front of other people. You know, like you can't you can't pretend with your consciousness. You know what I'm saying? There's certain things that you have to work on, and whether you choose to accept it or not is up to you. But I'm just one of them dudes where it's like I see the value in in mental health. I see the value in psychology. Like I see the value in philosophy. I see the value in all these things that I see the value in, in spirituality. You know what I'm saying? I see the value in all these different things that help you grow as a person, bro. And that's important to me because you can't do it. You can't do everything alone. You can't do nothing by yourself, but there's certain things that you have to work on on the inside internally and mental health is one of them because without that I can't get up and do the things that I do day to day we work hard and you know that I'm telling you bro the only thing you can do for self is manage yourself I always talk about man you can put that mirror in front of you and that mirror could start cracking or that mirror could start polishing up you know what I'm saying like if you woke up at 7 a.m. and by 10 a.m. you got a bad phone call so you still got what about 20, 20 more hours in that day mm-hmm. to get it right, make the day happen for yourself and be productive. But it's like, ah, oh, whatever phone call you have by 10 a.m., mm-hmm. if you if you just said, like, ah, oh, my day bad, okay, cool. Then you Love. might not meet a mental health podcast that might let you, you know, get your get your feelings out that might help somebody else. You might not meet these, these certain avenues that'll help you. So it's like, as far as... You know what I'm saying? Going throughout your day and dealing with the mental health thing, man, you, you got to just give yourself a chance. Like, okay, look, I'm going to brush that one off. Like you said, turn the other cheek. Shoot, sometimes I ain't got to turn the other cheek with light. You know what I'm saying? A bill might hit you hard. You might have to turn the other cheek on the bill. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to get you next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to get you in two weeks, you know? <laughs> like, nah, I'm yeah, about to take true. my daughter to Jump World. I'm I'm good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's... That's how it is out here. That's how I take it, too. I take it like that. Like, you can't let society dictate how you going, how you going to conduct your happiness. Like, oh, yeah. Because you went viral on the uh, you went viral on the doorbell cam, bro. Yeah, I was on the phone with and, you. Um, it, was, it was crazy. Yeah, we watched you, bro, get trolled because all people wanted to hear you talk about was, you know what I'm saying, taking a dump and putting food in your mouth. It's like people heard that and it was entertaining and it's like, okay, I get that. But then I'm hoping, I'm hoping and I'm praying that people really just looked at that moment and was like, you know, life is hard. Like life is hard, you know, although it was taken out of context and you know that, but like getting into the situation of it, like, okay, it went viral. I got 11 million views. Like somebody caught me on camera doing, you know, saying what I was saying, but if anything, somebody can look at that and just be like, you know what? Okay, this is this guy doing his job. He's a working. He's a working class citizen. He he ain't doing nothing wrong. But you're single though, huh? You're I'm single, single. I'm a single, single man. This. Okay, hold on. And I'm and I'm sitting there talking about life. Talking. I'm about sitting there talking about life. It was a little raw, but at the same time, I'm just an, I'm an honest dude, bro. And you know that. 
I wouldn't I wouldn't hurt nobody and I wouldn't talk to nobody disrespectful. But see, I'm I'm back you up on it. Cause bro, like, you know what I'm saying? People see me, they're like, ah, oh, okay, D I always smiling. Okay, you know what I'm saying? The strongest man, it has a weakness somewhere. Superman weakness was Lois Lane, you know what I'm saying? And you know, sometimes you gotta go to that lowest lane to find yourself, you know what I'm saying? You gotta go to that lowest lane to, you know what I'm saying, dig deep. And that's the mode. That's well. That's what the conversation was about. You was digging deep, and then that you know what I'm saying. You found the positive. You you bringing out different things. You know, uh, just working alongside of you, bringing out boxing. You bringing out mental health. Uh, you got the avenues to bring other people on your platform to you know help everybody else. It's not easy though. Yeah, because everything easy. you can't do for yourself, you can't do by yourself, bro. It's all about who got you there, and I'm gonna say that till I die. It's not about, oh, I'm here. It's about who got you to the table. It's about who got you there. You can't, you said it yourself, you can't do nothing yeah. by yourself. So Don't you've be been helping me. Yeah, but you can't be foolish at the table neither, though. Uh, I, and I think that's, that's as men, period, you know what I'm saying? No matter what race you are, as men, I don't think we really been uh, given the tools to, to lead the right way, you know, uh... What you mean, like in the household? Start yeah, out? I, was, I mean, you know, I had a dad, a dad in the household, um, I met my real dad at what eight, nine, you know what I'm saying? My stepdaddy was in my life from ages four. He's still in my life now, but you know, we had some rocky roads. But uh just knowing those different avenues, like not knowing who my real daddy was and then trying to like build a relationship with him now, it's different. Just because ah, bro, you could be gone for a hot second and then you'll miss a lot and you'll be gone for forever and then it'll feel like you ain't miss nothing depending on the relationship and uh, what's going on in a certain man like, Cause you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what I'm saying, not to cut you out. That's what Thank I'm trying you. to figure out. Like, how you go from a rocky road from to being, like, this Christian, newborn. Yeah, you keep asking that, man. Let me, let me answer like, that. Okay. People want right. to know, bro. All right, bro. Uh, again, I don't want to say it was me. Of course, you know, everybody started in the church. Uh, I don't know, bro. It's just, it just something happens. Sometimes you know? it's a feeling. I get that. It's a feeling. The music thing with doing okay, I was always writing poetry. I think uh, not playing sports in high school kind of elevated that a little bit. And the words just came out of nowhere because I call my mom right now. KD, what you doing? Oh, I'm just writing. You ain't got no homework? Nah, I ain't got no homework. You know what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't. I went to I went to school guy, bro. I don't like paperwork. You know what I'm saying? I went to school to be a nurse, uh, turned up a UPS driver. You know, it's and I only got nine classes left. All the degree majors out there, I know that's like disrespect, but I'm gonna finish someday. But I don't know, bro. I always wanted to help people, but I feel like if I a degree go, in like what nursing, uh, nursing because and see that's the thing, nursing. I'm supposed to help you come doctor on you, give you your shot, whoop de whoop, but. In this field of spirituality, following after Christ, all I'm supposed to do is love on you. You know what I'm saying? And you're going to get up out your bed and you're going to be able to maneuver and do those things. Now, on the behalf of that, man, just just walking in that. Oh, man, everybody don't accept you know, You know, I'm going to be real. You know why I keep asking you this question? <laughs> why, bro? Because you got to understand from my experience, from my perspective, like my cognitive way of processing, like who you are and how you move. It for me it was hard to to show affection. Like it was hard. I was one of them chuckleheads. Like I thought affection was weak, you know, sad. But I grew up like that, thinking that you had to be hard because for whatever reason, bro. Like, but it didn't take until like somewhere along high school to where I was like, dang, like if I walk out the house mad and come back home mad, like what am I taking with me? Oh yeah. And somebody you know, gonna humble so. you, bro. It's uh, it's either somebody gonna humble you or life gonna humble you, and it's um. So it's you gotta fascinating. Take it in, you gotta take it's it in stride, bro. You gotta and take I, it in stride. I like it, and I and I walk with it because obviously I'm 30 now, so I know the value in and again mental health and actually channeling your energy in a in a positive way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That you feel that it's not something that's my, it might not be tangible, but you can actually, you actually possess that that feeling, and you gain emotional intelligence. You get, there's so many gains to 
doing these mental health reps. Right. You know, talking about what's really going on in life and what's what's really important. And man, what's crazy, uh, you in the lane of a whole lot of women want to talk about it. Not a whole lot of men want to talk about mental health, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, a man could get beat by the police officer or go to jail or, you know what I'm saying? They, a whole lot of men don't talk about how they get abused in domestic violence relationships. And, you know what I'm saying, they'll feel like they ain't got nothing going on with them, but you spazzing out on your boys, you spazzing out in other places. Bro, you might have something within you that you might need to talk about, or, you know, you might have something else to offer. So it's like getting to why people be spazzing out, why we, we act in a certain way. Probably just because, bro, we ain't got these avenues to talk about it. And, nah, man, we don't know how to make this look cool. How you make podcasting look cool to somebody that's out there with a QP, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We don't know. Well, all we can do is, look, hey, bro, all you can do is network with the right people to get right. them, use it like a leech. But you say the right people. So that yeah. mean, like, to me, that mean like-minded people who share that same belief. It don't got to be on point belief, but... Yeah, it still got to be somewhere in the ballpark. I mean, because it's I, 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 bro, I regulate and connect with people that probably ain't never had to a spiritual side, never probably read the Bible at all. Because those are people I need to holler at first. Like, bro, like, look, uh, I see it's hard out there for you. I see you going through this, but this, this what kind of helped me. You can try it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna tell you, oh, bro, go do some awakening call. Go clap your hands in the trees or somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, bro, this. It is. But that's the thing about you is you tend to you tend to keep it real. You you are who you are, and I can tell you ain't faking it because you come with realness. You come with genuineness, and you're not trying to go around preaching like I'm better than you. I, I don't get that from that's, you. I feel like that honestly, bro. I feel like that's that's the fake part because I'm every bro, man. I'm telling you, bro. I call my mama right now. She can give me a problem. I call my daddy. We all not right, bro, until we exit. Like, you know what I'm saying? You might go to the corner store and see a, a <laughs> the lady that just left church. Bro, what's she about to do? She about to buy some lottery tickets. That's a problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They might give us a lottery. Okay, jackpot, 1.25 mil. Bro, off of jackpot, the tickets that they sold, they make it they 10. make it that. I thought about in that the, too. They make it time. 10 in the hood, though. So we looking at ourselves like, okay, people in the hood, like, bro, we ain't, we ain't because, got no money. It's because we getting everybody, into the lotto. Yeah, everybody lining up. So, it's crazy. okay, I'm, I'm being a big guy in the government table. If you could give me 10 mil from the hood and you struggling to pay your bills, I'm going to keep doing it to you. And that's me not being talking in spiritual. I'm, I'm going to keep doing it to you because you're going to let me do it to you. You're going to keep doing it. Yeah. Because all you want is 1.25 off the 10 million I'm going to make on you. So that's a mental a mental health thing. So it's like, I mean, like like how you were saying earlier with your brothers, bro, like we don't understand the the value of money. We don't really understand what it, what it do. We wasn't taught interest. You know what I'm saying? I'm learning about credit right now, bro. I got a good credit score, but my history, the the the, the history is, is what's bad. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh yeah, walk in there with a six fifty or and up. That's what well, it is. Mr. Banks, you ain't pay these people back. So turn around <laughs> and come back when you done paid them people back. But I thought America was about credit. Nah, it's about your history. America's like, supposed to be about opportunity. Mm-mm. You know. But unfortunately, sometimes you don't even get that opportunity. It's yeah. like the idea is supposed to be equal opportunity. It doesn't, even though you may start out, because we nobody starts at the same starting point in life. You get equal stress. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> you get equal you stress. Get equal stress. You know what I'm saying? Everybody stress so. equal. And but that's what brings us together. Oh yeah, you that's know? why we here. It's talking about struggles and successes, both of them. Like talking, being able to talk about the struggles for sure. Though that's that's like a bonding type of vibe because I don't know, like. I relate more to a person that didn't been through it versus a person who was born into, you know, wealth. Somebody who's born, and I'm not talking down on anybody that's like that. You know, you can't control where you, how you how you're born, but I can relate to somebody who's actually been through something. That's just me. 
Oh uh, yeah, I mean it's just me. Only thing about the people with wealth, bro. Uh, you could you could set up your picture as good as you want to, bro. But they out there going through some too. It's just it's just how it's been set up. The people with wealth, ah, uh, you feel like that man ain't got no flaws, but that man gotta wake up, brush his teeth like you, cause you know what I'm saying. He he his mouth been closed for eight hours. It stink. It don't smell good. <laughs> You know, he got to get himself together. You know, he yeah. got to, you know what I'm saying? So I think we forget those things. Like, you see your girl or your wife get a hat done. That rich man see the same thing. A perm stink. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it's going to stink on the rich lady head. It's going to stink so you on saying, the you saying average lady they, head. You saying perm they still the got to work on their mental. Yeah, bro. It don't, there's no dollar amount that's going to yeah. change how you got to exercise your mind bro i done talked to i'm pretty sure just with doing the job ups i done talked to plenty of millionaires and i love them differently i might pull up to a millionaire house and his his house is a shed with an rv through it and i'm like where your house oh i'm about to build it over there eventually mm -hmm. eventually though because it's like the the money different the the want and the need for just Show me, show me, show me. Got to get it, get it, get it. Got to prosper, prosper, prosper. It's, it's different for people. And that's that's why I try to slow myself down in this following Christ just because it's like, man, let me be patient. I'm 26. Yeah. I'm already showing the the uh, the growth of a man that's 35, 36. So let me slow down. Yeah, I mean, you on the right path. Like, I think you're doing straight. You got a, you got a, you got a daughter. You got another one on the way. You got a wife that loves you. You got people on your side. You still able to contact your family. You know, I mean, you your own man, bro. And you might get some shade thrown at you every now and again. But all in all, it seems like you bounce back, even if it even if it affects you. It seems to me like looking from the outside, then you bounce back. To me, that means something because you got to think you you influencing people without actually touching people you influencing people around you you influencing your tribe you influencing your culture so you still leaving a mark you influencing people with your music you know what i'm oh, saying yeah, so bro, my uh, my motto is do it again bro do it again <laughs> you uh you did it today okay you gotta wake up tomorrow mm -hmm. do it again what's the new tell me about the uh that verse or can you not talk about that Oh, uh, you talking about the walking into newness mixtape. Uh it's different, bro. Uh it's surprising me. Everything that's on there is new. That's the one where you got on with this with this uh other Christian rapper, uh, kind of popular Polo. Yeah, my boy Polo from Chicago. Chicago. Uh he writes everything. well, he don't write nothing. Everything is off the top of his head. Um Possibly Willie King is gonna be on there. He's from Houston. That's what's up. Um, possibly Kingsley Harris might be on there. You know, so uh, it's it's gonna be nice, bro. Um, I'm growing with that though. You looking at forty songs in? Um, I write on the spot. I don't like listening to a beat more than two to three times you know if i like but, it but why do you record with no shoes on nah with shoes on with shoes on oh yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you've been did. reading you've been reading up nah bro mm -hmm. i gotta have on shoes i don't know i can't record a song without shoes on gotta have you know on. what i'm saying i can't do it with <laughs> slippers on it's just it's just something about being ready uh I ain't trying you gotta to be strapped up. Yeah, you know, I ain't trying to influence nobody bad, but you know, in in prison when you got your shoes on, that means a certain thing. I mean, you, you got to be ready for the day. So, uh, okay. you, I look at it like this: if I'm about to go in the field on the mic, let me have my boots on, let me be strapped up. Uh, it's it's one of those things. I think every artist got this thing, though. You know, for sure. As for long sure. as it ain't nothing weird, you know. I mean, putting a lollipop on top of your head and tape it. And you Walk yeah, in and spit a bar. Yeah, know? yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. some to each his own, bro. I like me. You know what era I come from? I come from J Cole, Kendrick Lamar. Nah, bro, you come from P A, Pimp C. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The you come from a mm -hmm. whole different water <laughs> source, bro. Uh, 
it's it's different because but see that southern music that's that's definitely a part of our culture for but sure. you ain't never asked yourself bro like we in houston bro how did pimp c pull that sound out of pa it's nobody out there with this it, it's pimp c and bun b but, you met bun b before in real life yeah baby. i met bun b doing the, uh doing harvey working at a church you know what i'm saying he was he was at Antioch church in both months real cool dude bun b getting old bro oh yeah yeah like you know the the Bun B for like your age, you know, he was probably a little younger, but yeah. when I met him, oh, Bun still B got, got the, gray hair, oh, you know, hey, so you know. It, it, it's different, but you know, it's it's cool, okay, because, okay, boom, we in this spirituality thing, okay, those rappers understood that, bro, I can't do this forever, as far as like being in that spotlight, let me start doing some positive as far as like giving back, you know, my giving back might be just positivity, you know? saying following christ you know and bun b was at a church giving back so who knows what mental yeah, his mindset. what positive right. mental health stuff going on in bun b mindset but it's it's good to know that bro once these artists and these like people of power get to a certain level it's like bro let me start doing something positive like it's it give me hope because yeah. i need to see people who in a position of power do something good for people in the community versus somebody right. with power that's taking advantage like you say they're gonna keep doing it again and again yeah, and again bro. because it's just an easy dollar man come on bro ain't nobody uh don't nobody want to get used to police sirens and uh ambulance and yellow tape you know what i'm saying it's it's cool and with us living in texas you gotta think about texas guy and i'm saying this just looking at the government aspect not for nothing good excuse me Texas got Texas got the best gun laws. What you mean, but like that's, uh, in terms of like just freedom? They res they respect it. It's freedom. Mm -hmm. Um, you gotta think about it, man. You can go to the store at eighteen and leave out with a gun this long. Oh yeah, that's, that's that's bad. But in terms of how everybody looking at it, what they voting for? Oh no, just good. So it's like, but then you don't want to. You don't want to. It's like I see that, but then I look at the other side of the spectrum. And it's like you don't want the government having all of that power too oh, no. because if we don't have the ability to protect ourselves or at least the optics of being oh, yeah, able to man. look like we can protect ourselves talking yeah. to somebody that took the gun class bro but mm -hmm. the only reason why i didn't go through with it because this is this is one thing they don't speak on okay you get your gun license you get into a situation somebody do something to you and they take off running and that, that person got his back towards you you Take out your gun and shoot that person in the back. You in the wrong. One thing it's, that gun class teaches you. Texas, it's nah. a fleeing felon rule unless it's like that. Yeah, but one thing that gun class teaches you is to never shoot a man in his back. But okay. Most of the shootings happen is a man is getting shot in his back. Okay, I see what you're saying. So yeah. if it's going to be self-defense, bro, let it be self-defense. But everybody want to go out on their shield at certain times. Sometimes like, nah. people like to be like, you know, supercharged. So it's like, they, you, know, you know what I'm saying? You know. Thought. Of course, like I go back to what I said, yeah, we we got these laws, but ultimately these got these laws play against us in a certain way. Most definitely, you know they saying? play against uh, us. Yeah, I'll agree with that because, like, look at the uh, consequences. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'm not talking down on guns, y'all. My dad is a criminal justice major for 16 years. You know, homeland security. You know, we 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 into the the. Uh, the hold on, let me say this different. We into the whole uh the the you know the mechanics of how officers and all this supposed to work but you know mm -hmm. policing you, you know when we don't, we don't advocate for just policing like that it can't just be like just any kind of policing though it's supposed to be like when i took my classes i went to school you know I went, what i went to school for you went to, hold on what you went to school for, for? for criminal justice oh you want to be a minor a not really but even though China. i tried to be one <laughs> I tried, cop, but man. I really the experience. Okay, so since the cat's out the bag, yeah, I I went for it, but at the same time, I didn't want to do it. I just realized that working from the bottom up, that was something that I had to have in order to get to where I wanted to be. I wanted to be a lawyer, mm. and you have to go to bar, you know, school. You have to take your bar exam, yeah. and and that's like a three year process. You also got to fund yourself through that. 
you know, but I needed a job. I needed I needed something to get me there, and I didn't have any grants or nothing or any time to just focus on it without paying bills and mm. you know, like I don't I don't take it no kind of way other than just what it is. But I didn't want to be no cop, bro. But it's that's a, what it's life don't te- job, life don't bro. teach you uh, that you gotta. I think they supposed to be the main ones sitting on this couch, bro. Because uh, let's go back to just what you talk mental health. These cops see the most people that's in the most unstable mindset they could possibly be in every day. You know what I'm saying? And that's from all hours of the day. So with that being said, just like, okay, certain jobs. Everybody know now they just giving away jobs. You get on at this job, we'll give you an $8,500 signing bonus. We're going to cut your training in half. We're not going to teach you nothing. We just need you to go out there and ride around. And whatever Enforce the law. truck we give you, whether it's a ice cream truck, a post office truck, you know what I'm saying, a, a police car. So if we about to slack on our training, if we about to slack on communication and information and just feeding each other the, the wisdom, you know what I'm saying, to elevate, you know. We, but that's, that's why I say, not to cut you off, that's why I say, like, community-oriented policing is, is needed. Oh, yeah. But community, everything. And because one thing, bro, that you're doing, you you're doing the outreach that's about to walk into a or step on a whole lot of people's shoes. Mental health, bro. Mm-hmm. You gotta think about it, bro. It's somebody sitting at a uh <laughs> at somebody's secretary desk, hate their job, wanna shoot staples at their boss. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Where's the outlet though? Mm-hmm. To go to work and be the best you can be. The outlet is right here. You know, you hmm. see this red pillow? Let me put this by me. It's going to yeah. make the camera look better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see this red pillow? Yo, yo. People want to come sit by this red pillow. And it's it's comfort. Behind you, it say inspire. Do it say something behind it? It say yeah. dream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to yeah. live yeah. one, and you're going to inspire somebody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, all we could do is, is work with each other. You know it's, what I'm saying? You don't got to... Uh, go to church every Sunday, and that's the okay. Boom, let me go there. You don't gotta go to church every Sunday to just you know what I'm saying. Have a relationship with God, bro. Um, that's why I say we get too caught up into the theatrics of it because uh I might not go to church every Sunday. You might go to church every Sunday, but that shouldn't be a reason for you to tell me I ain't got what you got, or you know what I'm saying. I won't receive blessings like you receive blessings. Nah, it's not like that because you know. I don't know what you do behind closed doors, you know what I'm saying? But what I do see is when you come out your door, or come out your house, you angry. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, you're not trying to help nobody or you ain't really trying to, you know, be the best team player for that day. Because <clears throat> right now, I think, I think one of my brothers was talking about it. We was in the car chopping it up, and he said... Everybody want to be a boss. Nobody want to be an employee. Oh, yeah. That's clear. Yep. Shout out Cliff. I mean, that's the thing, though. Like, you need you need education. It's like it's like therapy. But what, I'm not saying what it's going to cure. Though, I'm not right? saying it's a cure. That's but the whole thing. What type of education, bro? Just like fundamentals. Fundamentals, but mental health should be like a class. Because, yeah, man. That mean, be. that mean we should have uh, stayed in football class all day because going to football practice probably taught you more than probably, you know what I'm saying, going to certain classes. It's going to give what football going to do is it's going to give you structure. Basketball. basketball, too. Like, it's going to give you structure. Not only is it going to turn you into an athlete, but yeah. it's going to teach you what being on a team is yeah, really bro, like. Think about it. You in class, you got the whole answer to the test. Oh, yeah, you know what time it is. I give you my answers, but I'm like, turn in and go. Boy, football practice, like, hey, bro, look, we trying to make this the last lap. Bro, get this play right. Everybody tapping each other. Get, hey, boy, get this play right. Bro. Mm-hmm. We not trying to run. We not trying to run. But in class, it's like, hold up, man. Mom, this is my own paper, boy. Mm-hmm. Why not? Hey, man, look, I'm going to tell you, if you don't get a five, you wrong. You know that I, I'm helping you out. If you don't it's, get a five, you're wrong. He over there with a three or two. He's like, nah, y'all, y'all supposed to have a five. Redo it. So after three tries, you like, 
like, look, uh, that's cool, but it's cool, but then at the same time, it ain't cool. It's cool, but it ain't cool because it's Everybody cool because you're helping. Though. Everybody cheat in college. I ain't cheat in college. That's you. You went to a private high school. Okay, yeah, I went to private high school. But still, I, you, know, you got all these public school people kids, were cheating bro. My me. mama, bro, I was zoned to Sharpstown High School. Look it up. Look it up. Look up what go down in Sharpstown High School on the southwest side. Okay. Look, you I, know what I'm saying? I'm gonna... Like, bro. I went to Lamar High School, same thing. But you was a party promoter in in college still though, right? Yeah, at Lamar College. Lamar, I went to sure. Lamar High School, then I went to Lamar College. That's a bet. A nursing major trying to be a party promoter. Don't, it don't work. Yeah. All the nurses laughing at me right now. How is that gonna work? But see, that's that's on them. That's on them because it might not <laughs> fit. Not possible. It might not fit society like you know standards or whatever. But that was to me. You can still be like who you are and still want to party promote, but maybe just a different type of. Nah, because right just now don't work like that. Right now, this this the party uh being being driven off grace and blessings and uh just walking in walking into newness. You know what I'm saying? Leaving leaving your old man behind. It's cool. We gonna always be fly. We gonna always be swaggy. You know, we gonna always have that lingo, but we gonna dress up that lingo. I might not drop no B's and S's and. If use in my, in my lingo now, I might switch it up. I'm, it might be a little bit more smoother, but I'm still gonna be able to, you know, get through to people. Uh, some people might, ah, oh, bro, you you blurring the lines. No, not really, you know. Well, there's plenty of people that that didn't done it. It can be done. I think is what you're saying. Like it can be done. It could be done, bro. Uh, yeah. man, I'm telling you, dog. Uh, Life could be as simple as you want it. I just think we go, we go, and we see too much. And I think that's another thing, bro. We see so much, bro. I can't, I can't. When I'm at the stoplight, okay, because I want a BMW. I ain't gonna cap. When it's time, it's getting yeah. bought. It's getting <laughs> bought. What you, what you want, salesman? Hmm, take it. Uh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Just cause it's like that's what I want. Like, but it's like ah, bro. Well, you work hard. You should, you should, you should be able yeah. to get that. But it's like, why you want the headache though? Because mm -hmm. you feel like you deserve it. We all feel like we deserve something. We all deserve to be heard. We all deserve to be loved. But maybe not. Maybe only but why those. Why nobody want to open up? If you feel I would like see, that, why I was you say that. why you don't want to open up? Like you know what I'm saying? If you feel, why you don't? Because open you're up? not gonna get none of that love if you ain't gonna open up or look like somebody that can be open minded. You're not gonna. You're not gonna get that love. Because like I said, bro, I thought affection, I thought showing like, like saying I love you, you know what I'm saying? I thought that was weak. Mm -hmm. I thought that was weak to say that. I, I didn't think you were supposed to go around saying that to like, yo, you know, like somebody who you might have love for, but it's like, hey, it's understood. I don't got to say that, but sometimes when you speak it, it really do have like a different. Yeah, and you talk about something that's hard to do, bro. It's hard to love people. I mean, everybody got their own motive, you know, their own perception. Some people might only love your first two minutes of your intro. Then they ain't trying to love the next 35 minutes of what you're saying. Like, it's, it, you know, it's it's hard to give people what, I feel like it's hard to give people what they want now. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> in a way, it's like, okay. But you, you know what people want. Yeah, that's like you. People, yeah. You're a UPS driver, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, a boxing advocate. And you can start at your own podcast. So you can have people come on here and distribute positivity through talking about mental health. Talking about your raw, uncut, you know what I'm saying, material. That give me, give me positivity, but give me realness. Oh, yeah. Give me realness because my, my ideas and how I feel might not line up with how you're feeling. And that's okay. But the, the whole purpose of this podcast is to get to some form of, like, understanding to where it's like, okay, I see where I'm at. And I know how I should so tell me, handle myself can going you, forward. Can you have a positive debate with certain people about things that they feel strongly on? Like, how do y'all meet in the middle? Like, somebody might say, okay, bro, okay, cool. We talking about mental health, but you ain't giving me nothing to to go home and do. Okay. What's your, what's your debate back on it? My debate on that is don't be, don't be a stranger to talking to yourself. You know, a lot of people say when you talk to yourself, you're crazy, but it's <laughs> important. People talk to themselves, it's important. Like, hell yeah, it's important, bro. Like, 
when I go home, when you wake up in the morning, you give thanks to God. Thank you for thank you for giving thank you for giving me life. Thank you for bringing me here. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, but with your own consciousness. It's the same thing. Like I don't know why it's watered down to the point. Self motivation for yeah. sure, bro. But you actually have to speak it. And sometimes you have to look at yourself in the mirror. And sometimes you have to be like, all right, I'm going to have a good day and I'm going to stay positive. And when I say it. Well, hold up, though. Just go back. I ain't trying to cut you off. But just go back to where I said you got 24 hours to say that to yourself. You know, that's a long time, bro. Okay. Let's, let's look at time right now. What time is it? <laughs> it's 141. Okay. I got to say that to myself another. How many? About 16. Man, come on, bro. You know how it many ain't people. Easy. Are, you know how many people ain't, ain't trying easy. to say that to yourself. It ain't easy, but it was never. Life was never meant to be easy, because we would all be, you know, it'll all be glitter and gold if it was easy. So part of part of life is learning how to deal with the hard stuff, and sometimes the hardest part is dealing with like how we talked about that plenty of times. How we be in our own way. Oh yeah. And for me, that was big. I was always in my own way, dodging blessings. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, mm. I had to come to grips with that. That sounds like that headlock. It's proper to listen to headlock. That's a great song, oh, yeah. headlock. So I had to come to grips with that, bro. And and only then was I able to realize, like, oh, damn, this this holds a lot of weight. This, this What's going on in here holds a lot of weight. Man, I'm, like, I'm, excuse me, I'm going to be honest. Everybody can't hold that weight, bro. Uh, and, I'm, I'm bro, I'm lucky to know type of people I know. And I'm speaking as voice like my brothers. It's like six of us. I think six. Brothers in, in Christ? I just like my, uh, well, I, I mean, you, I could look at them as my brothers in Christ. I, you know, we all moving differently, but just my brothers, period, bro. People, like, people that I done sat at the round table and we all had differences of opinion about, like, our lanes. But, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and you in the interview one of them, like, you know what I'm saying? Cliff, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's, you gotta have those type of people around you, bro. I'm gonna just, I'm just say that. Um, everybody is running like their own race, and you have to run your own race. I think it's that's true. that's major, but you gotta run your own race. Bro. You gotta be for yourself, like, but you also have to. Yeah, kinda, you know what I'm saying? Uh, because we never know what these lanes might do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, when everybody when they take off running the track, a lot of times once they start getting around that curve, the all them track runners right behind each other. They ain't about to, man, they ain't about to stay running that full circle. Let me get behind you. Because if I try to run this outside lane, this outside lane feel far, boy, none. Yeah. So it's like, man, you you know, uh, and it's, it's just at different times, bro. Like, you say you've been wanting to do podcasting all your life. You know what I'm saying? You've been doing the boxing thing for about 10 years. But boom, in the came now. When you thinking newer, you know, you feeling newer, you know, so you refreshed. You know what I'm saying? You got a whole bunch of things going for you. It's, it's overwhelming, but this what you want. It is, and that's okay. That's okay. I, when every time I feel overwhelmed, or I feel tired, or I feel like, man, this is a lot. It's a lot. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because I understand. Like I'm doing something right, bro. If I was a couch potato all my life, you know, I don't know what I'd be doing. Probably just that. But I realize when you want to be successful within yourself or just what you put out into the world, you're going to have to get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. If I want to let go of my addictions or let go of my my inability to accept certain things that put negativity into my life, if I can't face that fear and deal with that, then I can't go forward and I can't. You know what I'm saying? How can I give you good energy if I can't deal with what I got going on? So I gotta, I gotta deal with what I got going on to give you. You know what I'm saying? Or, or just anybody. Right. So my next question for you, I know is it's my interview, but I'm asking you: Do you feel like you should compromise for the people to to give them what they want? But ultimately, you'll be messing up your foundation. What you mean, compromise? Like something uh, out of character? Well, not nothing out of character. It's, it's more of like, mm, like, okay, like, taint what you doing. Okay, mental health. Okay, well, you sh it's so many ways you can go with it. Mm -hmm. So, it's like, you got mental health for, uh, man, 
I want to see it the right way. Just compromise. Like, okay, bro, dealing with over domestic abuse. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that. I feel like I can go there. Domestic abuse. Mental health on a domestic abuse. Somebody might make you compromise and say, oh, you, you can't talk about that because you never dealt with it. Okay, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, right, right, the compromise, right. like, bro, Oh, I don't want you touching on it because I don't feel like you you ain't you ain't dealt with it. Let, I let think part I think part of that is me being that's when the genuineness comes in. Mm-hmm. Like if I was to be genuine, I would tell you, you know, I don't understand what that feels like. And I but think this is what this question, is this yeah. is my opinion, and my opinion could mean something to you, or it can be something that you wipe your ass with. <laughs> it just depends, All right? Because you can't get through to everybody, that, right? And that's on my. But if I could too. see that you're willing to accept. Not even accept, but just listen to what I have to say, and I and I give you the same respect. We getting somewhere. Right. You can have a totally different outlook of life, is in terms of domestic violence, abortion rights, what how I dealt with COVID, how I dealt with my life in general. We might have two different complete outlooks, but I could sit here in front of you and be like, okay, this is this is what I think. This is what I feel. And then you tell me what you think and what you feel, and then we yeah. sit back and go, Man. "Oh, okay." It's crazy. Now I see where you're you coming from. Just cause you know we, you just came out of this whole paradigm of like, is medicine good or bad for you, or like certain medicines good or bad for you? Yeah, bro, we all we all be taking medicine, you know what I'm saying? With but that was the compromise, like, to uh, really in the past two two and a half years, we've been living in a compromise. Are you going to compromise for me because of my views? Yay or nay? I it see. depends on, uh, you know, am I willing to do it or not? And coming from being in that to everybody opening back up, now you got everybody like, watch out, like, mm-hmm. watch out, man. I ain't, I ain't people, had to people deal with buck, you. People like to buck back whenever you touch certain buttons. And, they, and, it, and it all, and again, it's like the experience speaks volumes. To a person's perspective, experience speaks so many volumes to how a person perceives. Or, uh, like for example, like I could sit here and be like, Joe Biden is a terrible person because gas prices are high. Mm. But I can also sit back and be like, okay, you know, clearly this is a man. This is an elderly man. He's in a position of of, of extreme amount of power. But clearly, I see. There are people in his circle, you know, telling him what how it's gonna go down. Oh, yeah, like, bro, I'm I could I could sit there and 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 really break it down, bro, and just and just think to myself, like, you know what? I can get mad at this person. I can get mad at a lot of things, but the best way the best way for me to take it is we all going through this struggle, all of us. You know, some harder than others, but we're all going through that. Sh- that this the struggle that we're sharing together and best way to come out of it is to you know number one maybe talk about it but number two go to work (laughs) number two make sure your always make sure your your pockets are lined up but i don't know man just Ah, that's what that's what it is get on pockets lined up you had people getting paid sixty five thousand dollars in COVID and unemployment no for sure all right, uh, a little bit closer. And unemployment. Sure. So while you was sweating hard at work, taking a 75-pound 75, 75 <laughs> box of three steps. So it's like, um, the game been changed, bro. Everybody thinks it's not fair. Right? And, and they, different. So you on point with this this mental mental health. So I just hope you can reach as many people as you can because people that feel like they ain't tainted right now, nah, we all, we all tainted right now. You know, everything going up. You know what I'm saying? We all been pushed into a corner. Yeah, whether you making two million a year or a hundred thousand or sixty thousand. We all pushing Bro, into I would a love to and I know I keep going back on it. I would love to be able to point my finger and blame somebody. That's easy. Oh yeah. It's easy. You can't do that. But it's just so much it's so much going on. It's so much that that we don't know. That that you know. I feel like if you could still go outside and cut your grass, you better not point the finger at nobody. Cause in these other countries, boy, you can't walk outside and do nothing. nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> by all means, in America, if you feel like we ain't got it all, bro, come on, man, we the most pampered. You know, uh, it's here. Yeah, yeah. It's and here. um, 
it's like we yeah bro put it like this put it like this and you know i'm out there in beaumont i met a lady from russia i met j cole touring manager he actually lives in beaumont you know what i'm saying uh you gotta think about i-10 i-10 go from louisiana to houston bro it's 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 a lot of people out here man and just america period uh we talked about that you know in afghanistan you don't need you don't need credit all you need is cash they bring that cash to america with no credit in america mm -hmm. you're gonna own by five gas stations so it's like you know it's just it's different bro we we didn't realize that game but somebody somebody showed country, us it down yeah they see in their country have nothing compared to coming to america but you see all these big buildings you're like hold up i got sixty thousand in my pocket how much does one of them cost i'm gonna start mm -hmm. right here you know so it's like but see you gotta put in hours when you got businesses like man, that. man come on bro all Can't. i gotta have no you don't all you gotta have is a little brother a little cousin and a daughter yeah. which shift you want yeah <laughs> which your daddy gonna take the first shift yeah when you get out of school 3 p.m okay you're gonna start at 4 p.m when mama could be there but you can't have stores just you got to have stores in certain areas because certain Man, areas look, you, you know how they go look bro what so, i just said the lottery they making 10 million off of 1.25 million mm -hmm. that's all in the hood though like that's that's a lot more a lot of that's hood money that's yeah, people retirement checks so you know everybody just believe in christ walking christ you know what i'm saying stay close by the water but bro i think right now what the major problem is we can't step on young people wisdom you know what i'm saying i see it in i see it in my brothers like we some strong-minded people and ain't nobody over 27. Mm. you know what i'm saying we look at you like oh you you an elder boy you 30. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? but it's like people look at us it's like ah oh, dang y'all got y'all got that figured out right now yeah knowledge is increasing but we ain't we ain't wasting it um because we ain't got that much time and we trying to get somewhere oh yeah we all gotta go sometime that's why you already boy you got these red pillows you already here you already here inspire and dream to be on the kinky team nah, I'm playing. but you know well at least we can look we can sit back and say that we did something yeah you know like I think that's what it is like you know like people talk about legacy and stuff like that push though bro push it's a lot of people uh, need to be on here a lot of people need to be heard you know uh you're doing a whole lot of outside just stuff. you just gotta keep it going keep it going because it's a whole lot of stuff that yeah well we i just i just don't not to cut you i just don't want people to get so hung up on what society wants you to be paying attention to that's why they gotta see what you know you look at just what's important that's and, why they gotta see what you deal with too let go of all that animosity that, that they want you to have towards certain people who look like they in that position of power but in reality there's a lot more going on things that you don't see that they don't want you to see you know what i'm saying certain so what things. you don't want people to see oh uh, i can't i can't dictate that you know what i don't want i mean like if i had to choose bro like they seen the doorbell cam I didn't want nobody to see that. You ain't want nobody to see that. But at the same time, I'm glad it happened. Because that was a moment where you, you got to see me like in raw, raw form. Yep. I'm not trying, you know, I got cameras in front of me, but I'm still sitting here. I'm trying to show you, like, look, I'm still me. Bro, like, so I'm still crazy. me. I'm not trying to be. You could have been seeing any other thing, bro. Like, you could have said anything else. Like we could we could find a million bad things to say on that doorbell account. But it's like that was the right piece to bring in. Like, bro, is this how people really feeling right now? You see what I'm saying? And that's why I'm glad it happened, because people can at least take that. It might have been a little, you know, a little extra, but people can still take that and be like, you know what, life is hard. I I get it. Like I get it. You know like thank you <laughs> some people was like thank you and but what, what treats you got for the people what's 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 next for you for me bro i just go with god yeah i just walk with god you because any boxing you know well i, mean? I wanna i want to what i'm doing right now is i'm working on you know just a few things trying to get people involved in 
martial arts of the martial art of boxing um mixed martial arts that's always fun um i loved I, the only reason why i love doing it so much bro is because it's just like working out you know, i don't i don't advocate for no violence and nothing like that but it teaches you how to really hold your own and right. it teaches you character it builds discipline and it gives you this structure that you can't find in football you don't have it's just a different type of structure like you know if i had like your daughters i hope your daughters uh, take a liking to it. Maybe they can do jujitsu or something oh, like that. Man. You, you asking me to be at the school talking to the principal, man. You know, uh, <laughs> no. that was, you know, and that's another thing. Yeah. That's another thing. Like you, when you learn a technique or a skill set, some of the some of the most dangerous people are the most humble in life. And I wish we had more monsters around. Like, don't take that literal sense oh no nah, we already got enough <laughs> you know what i'm saying i right. wish we had more warriors more humble beasts around walking on this earth because we will take care of each other oh yeah bro I, I do i do an experiment all the time you know i might go to the corner store i might see the most dude might pull up on elbows swing i'm gonna hold the door for him yeah just so i can hear him say appreciate it bro because i know it's in him I don't care if you getting out with banging, swinging. Mm -hmm. Man, come on. I'm going to hold this door on purpose so I can hear you say thank you. And that's yeah, what you it's cool. And that's what it's supposed you to be. You can pull up with a you know, Drake or everything, but watch when I hold this door, you're going to say thank you. And I, it, it you're happens. bringing them back to that, yeah, to that state of. Yeah, appreciate it, bro. Like, you know? I appreciate it, little bro. You know, as long as I get that, I, oh, it's in there. That, that person with mental health stability is in there. You know what I'm saying? So. That's how I look at it. You, we got to do these experiments. I heard somebody uh, do an experiment. <laughs> it was crazy, but he went to the corner store with a hat on, t shirt. <laughs> Ain't nobody said nothing to him. Yeah. He said, okay, bet. Let me go back with a suit on. Oh, sir, you need anything? Uh, you need a big gulp? We, we got, mm -hmm. you know, he said, bro, I started getting so many different interactions it's all because of what I had on. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, now it's, it's what you have on, it's what come out your mouth. Is what's on your what's what's on your history? What you what you been doing? So it's like, bro, you can't but please nobody. The uh, it's because it's easy to be full of shit. <laughs> yeah. It's easy. It's easy to judge and be like, oh yeah, you that's that's what you are. You know, sometimes like you can see it. Sometimes you can see when somebody's being judgmental, right? You know what I'm saying? And for me. I don't try to get around that type of energy. That's all it is. Like, if you really want to remedy the situation is let them be them. But that doesn't mean you have to yeah. become what they want you to be. And you went to a private school, bro. So you you got taken out the public aspect to go to a private school. So that came with structure. You know what I'm saying? You know, I went but to it a wasn't, public school. But it wasn't easy, though. Oh, I believe like, it. I believe I'm, so, it. I'm surrounded by people who don't come from the same culture as I did starting out. You know, like, so I had to, and I was speaking to that to my last interview, like, it's not easy because you have to make a decision. You have to be like, okay, I'm going to be myself. I don't care if anybody says, I can't hear what you're saying, Kings. Like, what are you saying? <laughs> I used to get in trouble because I had the deepest voice in class. It's crazy. Like, it's, cra it's crazy. Like, I used to get in mad trouble because I had the deepest voice in class, so the teacher proclaims like oh i can only hear you just like saying you got the freshest fade in class like oh you got the freshest fade in class get out and what? so i had to be like okay every time i speak it's like it's a problem so let me try to adapt and make it to where these people can hear me so i started losing my dialect piece by piece to the point where i got so proper you had to you know, compromise. I had to I had to make a decision and I <clears throat> looking back in retrospect, of course I wish I would have stayed mm -hmm. to my foundation, but at the same time, you know, I took my lick like it was. You know, I was a kid just trying to grow up, trying to understand like what it is to be in this environment mm -hmm. because you not only do you have to adapt, but you have to ex excel. And you have you got homework every day. You know, I don't know how it is in public school, but you got homework every day in oh, private man, school. We had homework every day. It's just, you know, it just was different. You know, you got people to cheat off of, bro. <laughs> um, I look back on school now. I learned, I learned a lot in school. You know, I learned how to, uh, 
You learn you learn how to deal with people in school. You learn how to get picked on in school. You learn how to, you know, bro, it's a thousand. You ever been bullied? Uh, <laughs> I feel like everybody been bullied, but it's light. You know, it's everything is well. I can't speak for everybody. Mine was like, like, uh, when I was in middle school, they called me Peanut. I got a peanut head. You know oh, what I'm saying? Too. You know what I'm saying? It was, it, like, it was life stuff. You know, uh, <laughs> I can't. I done had. I done had somebody ask, "Hey, hey, what's what size shoes you got on?" I because mm-hmm. I used to mm-hmm. I used to walk from walk from school, like all middle school. I walk home. You know what I'm saying? So, hey. Bro, what size shoes you got on? <laughs> My size. What you mean? Sizing you up. Yeah, bro. but what's what's crazy? The dude that used to ask me for what's my size, so I being cool with me because he's like, ah, oh, you walk home, you you do this. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I I walk home by myself every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm not about to take my shoes off, put them on my backpack. I'm not about to do that, bro. Like, so it's just. What it you was gonna, all like stuff. So how you gonna handle it when you like when your daughter? Gotta go through that. I've oh, always bro, thought be, about I'm stuff be, like that. I'm gonna be honest, man. For any king, bro, for any man that got daughters at home, oh, you already know how we thinking. We're not about to have our daughters going through that. They might feel the lightest of that. If my if my I let my daughter walk home, I might be on the other side of the road just watching her walk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. like I'm I can't go to that full of extent, you know, because right now, you know, she running behind the bigger kids at the park. Cause she mm. the youngest, you know. Bro, she she rough, she rough, but <laughs> nah, nah, bro. I'm I'm a girl dad, so I gotta, mm, you gotta I gotta have alert. her feeling like oh, when when she meet a man, oh no, nah, my daddy had me up here, so you gotta do that too. I like that, you know. I, like that. I remember, bro, man, you know, in the Bible, bro, a man, you know, Adam was speaking to stuff until we bit the apple, you know, and sin, but we started to till the ground and work, you know. So I, a man is supposed to work, bro. If you don't work, you don't eat. If you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah. Oh, a woman. I don't. I don't know. You know. I don't know what a woman's. Supposed to, I was made a man. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm saying. I know we need each other to cohabitate and you know make offspring and set up mm-hmm. a structural foundation. But women are women. Women, to me, was never supposed to be behind us. They were supposed to be on the side of us. Oh yeah, facts. you know. Facts. I don't know. Some people think like that. Like you know, you got to have a good woman behind bro, you. Bro, they like, push out a child. Yeah, we ain't never, we ain't gonna never yeah. do that, ever. You know what I'm saying? They, uh, well, let me not get into technology. They trying to do it. But uh, it's just I, not. I don't see it, bro. I don't you know. see that. You know what I'm saying? They carry a child for nine months, bro. Uh, uh, more power to women, bro. But at the same time, we we need to find a way to, you know, be a team. Oh yeah, be a team. And I like the relationship that you and your wife in because. Y'all basically emulate what relationships should be about. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all look out for each other. Y'all communicate. I see it. You know what I'm saying? And y'all come from y'all both come from humble beginnings, so it's like y'all share that same struggle. Oh uh, yeah, that's I, a, I that's, that's what that's helps, deep, bro. I, it, it was weird. I was a flashy one, party one. You know, um, I had a car at 16. You know, she was like country girl, didn't do too much, so it, it had its balance. And with God dealing with. It, it balanced it out, bro. For real. Look, man, I'm, real a, quick, I just I just want you to uh, t- tell everybody about your music, though. I want everybody to understand, <laughs> like, what what are you about? What is it, what is this? What what kind of music do you got? I want people to really just bro, click on uh, and, and see, like, what's what, up? From the feedback I done got from people, it's just hard gospel. Because mm-hmm. I don't curse. Um, I write on the spot. What can they find you at? YouTube, man. Uh, find me on YouTube. Kadarius. K A D A R I O U S. But it's man, it's it's only gonna get better, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to ex- excel on my writing. I look at myself as a lyricist, man. I, I like words. I like messing with words. It's it get hard at times because I don't feel like uh it's only thing about okay. Let me just add is that. One thing about with the gospel rap, bro, it's hard to get through to people just because you might not always want to play it. But it's like if I could just get you to listen to it, you're like, dang, okay. That's Man, cool. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I heard it. I heard that song, "Deny Thyself." It was it was deep because for me, please understand, <laughs> I don't listen to Christian rap. But when I listen to when I listen to yours, it was different. 
It's, it had this vibe yeah. to it that was like it resonated with me. Like it's it's not cheesy, it's not corny, it's deep. I know some real. people, bro. They they leaving me alone for a while just because they trying to see how far it's gonna go. Yeah, you progressing. And I, re, I, re, I respect it because like they don't want to tell me nothing right now. Uh, you know, I I know if, I know a few people in that gospel lane. They got some got a plat, solid platform, but right now it's more about like man, just see what because you gotta think about it, bro. We leading from a crack space and a piece of sticky gum on the ground. You know, mm -hmm. so I only got sixty eight subscribers. On uh on YouTube, but it's like I'm going in like I got five thousand subscribers, you know. I like so, that. Uh, it's that energy that I'll be talking about. You no, know, it's dope right now. Right now I got four songs. Well, I got five. I wrote a song this morning. <laughs> I got five songs done right now. I just gotta record it. Coop just hit me up too while I was sitting. You know what I'm saying? So it's like uh still. It's good to know, man. You got the people around you. I'm just trying to get better though, cause I I I, I love the competition. I love I. I we, if we gonna talk about like we talk about boxing sports mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying shoe game bro it's it's a competition with uh just writing period not even rapping with mm -hmm. writing it's it's, it's, it's like an art form it's oh, like yeah. it's like another one another and i had to learn form. a whole lot i had to learn how to punch in um i gotta learn how to shorten up so, so many words you can't have so many words and i didn't know how to write when i first started i didn't know how to write at all you could write good words and have everything, but you can't make a song. You know what I'm saying? You could be a freestyler and can't make a song. So hmm. it's, you got to learn so many different things. Uh, I got a light voice. Learned that sure. I could sing a little bit, harmonize a little bit. But with the past of, you know, dealing with my old self, uh, smoking and whatnot, that, that tainted my voice. So it's like, you know, you go off what you're good at. Mm. only thing I can say about somebody that's writing um try to be a writer don't try to just go in there and make a song try to be a writer because it'll come out better for you on the end you like you we look at the kendrick lamars and the j coles and honestly i don't have no idol in this gospel rap because i i don't see nobody that's writing good you know like with the rapping oh man come on man. my daddy will try to get me a gospel artist and i'm just like because he's trying to figure out what i'm coming up with because yeah. he's I don't, bro, that's the thing, I ain't hit a... You ain't going off of nobody. It's yeah, and I don't have no ego with this because I don't know where I'm getting it, where I'm getting it from. I don't well, know why interesting. I don't It's spot. interesting to say the least. I, oh, yeah, man. Look, man, y'all got to check that out. It's it's different. Like, it's good, though. But I, have I appreciate that. you introducing me to the studio, too. That was different. That was a different experience. Oh, yeah. Man, um, that, everybody don't know that you could write. Like, you know what I'm saying? And you, you about to figure out what type of writer you are, bro, real soon. We're going to keep staying in the studio because uh, you might be a personal writer mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i'm good at just doing any type of story mode you might be just just writing feelings you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying because i ain't gonna i don't write my feelings on them i don't think i do and i think that's good because once i start because i think that's the kendrick lamar and j cole they in their feelings right now but they're mm -hmm. giving you story form feelings like and people they, just like you know what i'm saying they yeah. giving you like bro this is what i'm just dealing with and i'm about to just lay it out in story form i ain't got that yet okay. you know what i'm saying so in a way that's like my dragon ball z kame kame ha when i do get into feelings mode and telling uh -huh. telling yeah. people this how because right now I'm, I'm gonna be honest i'm still trying to scratch people's ears you know so i'm i'm making it fun you know i might do little little stuff to make it fun and i'm not oh, planning it it comes up in the studio i was just gonna say just keep doing what you're doing because i think again i think it's interesting I, uh especially like somebody who never really been inside the studio i see how you move and you got a lot bro you got a lot of talent and you gotta stay working on your craft like don't stop you know just right, keep, bro, keep going thing with that, bro. And I'll leave it at that with being a dad and a husband and just, you know what I'm saying, just trying to understand life. Uh, let the music be yourself because, you know, everybody know with the music game, bro, you might make music for five, six years, don't blow up. You can make music for a month and blow up. So for everybody, it's different. Only thing about me, whenever it do happen, I'm about to be like this. Mm-hmm. Because the work that, is done. It's done. The it's a hundred songs over there. Go. <laughs> Go. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't put it out nowhere, so it's like 
It's only on YouTube. It's free. Okay. At Kadarius Banks? Nah, just Kadarius. Kadarius. K-A-D-A-R-I-O-U-S. Everybody want to know why am I using my regular name? Hey, because I want you to see the storyline. You can go find me, Kadarius, everywhere. Twitter, Instagram. The only thing about Instagram, I ain't posted nothing in four years. So you see why I stopped wanting attention. You know what I'm saying? You see where mm -hmm. it got cut off. So it's like, where he at? <laughs> then you... You go to YouTube, and then you got, okay, two years ago, he started dropping music. So, like, dang, how long? What? What is space? And I think it shows, to me, it just shows, hey, we human. <laughs> yeah. And you got, <laughs> you got something going With on. With social media, it's like, it's social like, media keep track of you. So, it's like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You, you, you use it as an escape. You know what I'm saying? People come back to social media when they booming. Right. Right. But... Regardless of the boom or the or the drop, still stay on your shit. Still stay on it, bro. Right. Don't don't stop. You you it's resonating with somebody. You know, even if it's this podcast, it's resonating with somebody. It's there. So people. either way, positivity hit win, lose, or draw, maybe, you know. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Look, I appreciate you. Man, I appreciate you having me, bro. Uh, I messed up the mic. That's all right. Before I let you go though, um, at this point in your life, would you say that you're taking more wins or more losses? Uh, man, I'm gonna say I've taken more progressions, but I, just because you know, um, being a young man with the intensity of like positivity and just doing the right thing, you gotta take them losses, man. Get them losses out the way. So I'm, I'm looking for, I'm looking for the next up, upcoming. I don't want to call it a loss. I'm going to say trial or obstacle because I know that's only going to make me tap in and, you know, go to a, a state of my mindset where, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get through this one too. So uh, I'm looking for another one. <laughs> I, I, you know what I'm The win is waking up, saying that I'm dealing with the loss. That's the win. I like that. You know what I'm saying? I can't. I mean, it's all about how you look at it, bro. Perspective is key, brother. Yeah. Hey, y'all, this is Posted Reality. We'll be back. Peace.